Hey there, welcome back to another devlog. Very recently, I started working with a couple other developers on this project, so hopefully we should start getting features added more quickly, and that means I should be able to make more devlogs on the updates related to this project. You can check out the YouTube channel of one of the developers I'm working with on this project in the description below, and you can even see the Risk of Rain style project that he was working on. Since the last devlog, there are a few new things I would like to show off. Firstly, there is now a session saving system using memory stores. This allows any players who may have accidentally disconnected from an active multiplayer session to reconnect back to it if that session is still active. So I had a session I was playing on with another account I was using at the same time. That session is still open and I rejoined back into the game and now it's prompting me if I would like to rejoin that session that I disconnected from. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I would like to rejoin that session. And then it should teleport me back. And here I am back in the session with the other player. So now the players in the game have the ability to rejoin sessions they may have disconnected from, which should improve the user experience in that regard. You can now also see what the difficulty is for a lobby in the browsing menu, as well as when you are a member in a particular lobby. So let me go ahead and head to the multiplayer section and view the lobby, and I'll create a lobby on this player over here. We'll create a new lobby. And right now I don't have a difficulty selected, and for the other player, it currently shows that we don't have any difficulty selected. But once I select the difficulty, let's say I select a novice difficulty, it's going to update for the other player and say that, hey, this server is on the novice difficulty, or if I change it to any of these other difficulties, it's also going to update for that client. And then when this client joins into this server, it's also going to be able to display what the current difficulty is in the bottom. We're also able to see what survivors a player has selected. Currently, no survivors have been selected for either player, so it says NA for them. But if I were to go and select the only character that you can select, which is Telamon, it's going to update for me, show that icon, say I selected Telamon, and it's also going to update that for the other player. And then of course, my other player can go ahead and select a character and it updates here and for my other player as well. As for the next place, we've now got some models added for some of the interactables in the game. And these models are also animated on the client with custom proximity props. So as you can see here, it's prompting me to open up this small vault that currently costs $1,807. And that's because I'm currently testing with a hypothetical 100 players in the game. So if there was 100 players in the game, this is what the loot spread would look like. But I can go ahead and interact with it. And it opens the vault and has this little animation. No items yet, but I think it looks pretty cool. And then of course we have the same thing with the large chests. It'll open and have an item come out of it. And then these barrels over here are going to be the same kind of currency barrels and XP barrels in Risk of Rain 2. So you just open it and get whatever XP you want. Currently the XP reward calculated with 100 players would be 123 XP points and 246 ticks. We've also got some footsteps as well when you're walking around. And then we've also got a model for the teleporter. Pretty similar model. I'm not sure if this is going to be the permanent model we're going to be using, but it also has a proximity prompt in it and I can activate it. It doesn't do anything right now. It just says activated teleporter and that's it. The next thing you might have noticed is that the health bar is a little bit more stylized and it's going to have more functionality. So when you lose health, it has the same effects as Risk Rain 2. And if your health gets too low, the health bar will start flashing. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you. Okay, so if I were to go and set, let's say the health to 90, I lose 10 health points. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and update the property right now. And as you can see, it shows that I lost my 90 health points and I got damaged a little bit. And of course I'm regening. And then I'll show you what happens when our health gets way too low. So I'm going to set the health all the way down to one. And as you can see, we have that damage flash around the screen. And now the health bar is flashing because our health is really low and we're slowly regening our health. All right, and that's all of the updates that I have for you so far. I'm sure I'll have a lot more to show all of you once we've ramped up our development, but a huge thank you to everyone who applied to the Google form and a big thanks to you, the viewer, for supporting the development of this project. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.